We've counted somewhere between three and 400 kids were likely sexually abused oh over the two years those guys were there. You know, what's, what's scary and where Americans need to wake up. Mm -hmm. We call this a hidden war because... I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis House. So for people that have no context about uh, you or this issue in the world and in the U.S., what is OUR, the mission that you guys have, and how bad is the problem in the world right now? So Operation Underground Railroad is, is our foundation. We're a nonprofit, and we... Uh, we strive to empower law enforcement and aftercare services in the extraction and healing of, of child sex victims, and often it's adult uh, sex victims as well. Right. And uh, so we, we are in, uh, we have five regions. We have offices in, in five different regions, so the sun never sets anymore on our operations, which is very exciting for us. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just constantly working with law enforcement, and they ask us to do different things, you know. Um, there's so many ways to attack it because it's enormous, right? There's millions of people. There's more people enslaved today than ever before in the history of the world, which is shocking to people because they think their textbooks tell them that it ended with, with Abraham Lincoln and the end of the transatlantic slave trade. And it's like, no, it's weird as ugly head again. And there's more people now than, than, than ever. Slave labor, sex, and organ harvesting, which is becoming a bigger thing, believe wow. it or not. Um, and so we just, we seek to empower law enforcement. Sometimes it means trainings that we do or equipment, um, oftentimes they ask us to go undercover because our guys and girls are all, mo most are former law enforcement, yeah. our operators or, or military and, and they can infiltrate very rapidly. Right. Um, especially if they look like they're Westerners. Sure. And that's, not a, and that's a bad thing, by the way, for, for us who live in this country because what it says is we are the demand. Mm. And we are. We're the largest consuming country, the United States. Of, for, of what? Of child sex videos. Wow. Um, Would that also include sex um, engagements with ch kids, or more consuming, you know, child pornography? Correct. It's the it's the consumption of the of the child exploitation material, uh -huh. child rape videos, and we also we are the top in the top three uh, for destination countries because with the, if the demand is here, the traffickers would love to get the kids here. Right. So we see that happening. A lot of that's happening right now with the with the failed uh, border enforcement. People can just come right in. Kids are coming. I know they're coming in. I, we're, we're, we're seeing this happening. Um, and, and so we can, we can easily play the role of what the, what the, what the like preferred client looks like. Right. So traffickers all over the world see us. And we, we, we put ourselves in the right place. We know where to go. And they welcome us in and boom, we can infiltrate rapidly, get the in evidence back to law enforcement and they can, they can pursue. So. And how many, I guess, what do you call them, extractions, where you've gone in and, and uh, rescued or even arrested people that are pedophiles or dealing with the local kind of sex slavery in these different regions? How many people have you arrested or captured, and how many kids have you supported in this process in the last eight years? So we are uh, just under 5,000 arrests wow. that we've supported. All around the world. All around the world. We've done thousands, a couple thousand operations supported you know, directly or, or, or indirectly. Um, and then the number of actual people that we've been able to extract and help get into recovery is uh, over 6,000. It's incredible, so, man. Yeah. 6,000. Women and children, yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. How does it make you feel when you think of those 6,000 faces that have better lives now? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I need, to, I love to see those people or know their names um, because I don't ever like to get into statistics, you know. Right. Because if you go statistics, six thousand versus literally millions, you know, if people say that's a drop in the bucket, and I just get because I'm like, you know what? I've done operations before. Uh, like there was a there was a target in Mexico that we worked on for over a year. This trafficking organization, we could not get in. We get this close, and they get torn away. We close again, and I'm like the money's building up, and I'm getting pressure from the financial division of our, like, Tim, you got to stop. I can't stop. I know we're this close. And we finally broke through about six months ago, and it was one of the operations that I participated on personally, and, and it, was, it was one kid. But this was, this, this was one little boy who, um, he had been, uh, it had been years. We think he was about nine or ten when it started. He still looked nine or ten to me. Um, but it had been a couple of years into this, and, and I remember the, the, we, we found him, and I saw him on the beach for the first time, and they're trying to sell him to me. He had all the videos undercover. Oh, and, uh, and I remember we call it Operation Football, football, you know, soccer ball, really, yeah. if you know how we translate it. And because as we walked away, uh, as we walked away, the little boy said, Senor, Mr. He's like, it's the first time he spoke. He, and he said, 
he knew we were coming back, right? To do horrible things to him. Oh. And he says, Can you could you bring me a soccer ball when you oh come back? Oh my gosh. And I was just like biting my just like, oh my gosh. That night, it was a crazy case because that night, um, they were supposed to bring the, the kid to our house. We like to control the settings. We had a sting house. And then they called us and said, hey, another cartel, you're just outside our cal- our cartel zone. Uh, we can't risk, this kid, they said, this kid's a golden goose. We make so much money. Oh we cannot gosh. take him out of, like, they will kill us, like the cartel bosses. And so they said, you, you got to come to this hotel. And it was our, our intel, people look it up, it's, it's owned by cartel. And it's like fatal funnels everywhere. It's one of these hotels and it's just, it's just no a garage. Stage, you oh, yeah, yeah. It's only a garage you, door open because it's all, it's for, it's for sex, you know, and so you, you go and they close the door oh my gosh. and you go upstairs. There's just one single room. Nothing's connected. Oh, my gosh. And, and I remember our guys were like, Tim, you can't go. I'm like, screw, are you kidding me? And I do a little trick. This is why it's about the individual for me because it was super dangerous. We didn't have time to be forward deployed. They had the kid out. The golden goose was out for just one day and they were going to take him back. If you don't come now, you're not going to get him. Oh, my gosh. And I had to go because I was the face they knew, right? There's, right. And, um, and I, I, I remember it, we were in the sting house that, that never was, right? And I, I take two steps to the side. I remember just, I just this kid, I, I find the kid of mine who's closest in age. I do this every time. Of your child. Of my, and I have nine, as you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, it's easy for me to find <laughs> yeah. whatever kid we're looking for. I'll find one of mine. Yeah. And, you know, I used to avoid doing this because it hurt too much. And then there came a day in my career where I was like, no, let it happen. Wow. Let that kid be your kid. Otherwise, oh I, might not, I might not go. You know? right. I might not go. And I remember walking away, and, um, and this is what happens usually. <laughs> and I see, my, in this case, it was my son Luke, who was mm-hmm. closest in age to him. I think 11 or 12, or I can't remember the exact age. but And then I asked myself a simple question. If that was Luke, mm. what would you do? It's a no-brainer. Right. If it was Luke, I'd go there. And now, who am I to say, well, it's not my kid, then, then forget about it. Well, as it turns out, as I could have imagined, there was no parents. Right. We still have found the parents. He doesn't know. He was taken from a, a, another part of Mexico. He doesn't even know where he's from, right? All he knows is he's, he's getting raped every wow. day. And, and the only adult in his life are responsible. So then it's easy. It's like, that's my son. That's it. Wow. And, and we went in and... We brought three fo- three soccer balls <laughs> oh and some Legos and and took care of him. We did we did went undercover and got the information we needed. The cops stormed the place, got the kid out, and I'll tell you what I, I get reports all the time. He's doing awesome. He's wow. he, he he. We have met one of our partner um, foundations that do the aftercare. He has a so- there's a soccer field there. Oh he's, man! And he's he uh, he's just the happiest kid. He's free. He's free. You know. Wow. And then I, I went back to my team after that operation and I said I'm going to show you the bill. This has been over a year. This is how much it cost. For one kid. For one kid. I said, did you guys think we would save more than this? Of course. We, we thought it would be 20 plus. And I said, was it worth it? Or would you go back and say, we wouldn't do this again? Are you kidding? It's worth it. And then I asked him again um, another question. I, and I, I try to always do this when I'm there. And, so wait. So let me so break it down what happened. So you went to the hotel. Yeah. And it's super shady and sketchy. Oh, yeah, and I you're remember. like, okay, I'm going to go in this, you know, trap door essentially. Yeah. And and what? You go up into the room so, with yeah. the so, soccer balls. And- so yeah. So I'll explain. So this, you, you, we had a house. And you're dressed like a. Like oh a, yeah, I got I got a wig and a fake scar right. and fake eyes, you know. And you're acting like a pedophile. Absolutely. That you're looking mm-hmm. to, to to pay for sex with a child. with this yes. kid. Yeah. So we have a house with seven cameras for the evidence, right? Right. And you, you, there's only so much you can do. You, there's only so much you can do after that. Right. So when they call and say, "Just kidding," come here. Come here. It's like we have nothing. So you, you know, my, my, you were just talking about one of our, our partner organization yeah. operators, Jeremy Locke, yeah. right? Yeah. So he was with me, and he, that guy's got balls of steel. Like yes. he'll do anything. So, so he, he said, "I'll, I'll forward deploy best I can." But he, so he goes in first with a girl pretending he's going to like it's a sex place, right? And he calls like, bro, <laughs> there's very little I can do for you. Wow. Like, I got a room, but it's like these rooms don't even connect. Oh like, the gosh. only way in is to go through a garage. They're all individual garages, so you can get in and out without oh being seen, gosh. right? You can bring prostitutes, or that's what it's designed for. And then the rooms, you go upstairs, and it's, there's like a little, like, turntable, and you can buy, like, sex toys, and and you buy it, and they bring it to you, and you turn oh, the little man. thing, and you pull out the... It's nuts, right? Crazy. So I go in with my small team, and, and there's just nothing we can do. It's just like, I don't care. I remember the team leader, uh, he's like, Tim, you can't go. You can't go. You're the founder of this organization. I'm like, I'm the only one. That 
has the face. They know they're not. No, who's gonna go? I'm not gonna let this kid go. He's my son. He's it's Luke. I'm calling him Luke. Right. All right. I'm like I'll do anything for Luke. You know, and uh, ugh, and um, and so we 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 go in and. So you're going in alone then at this point? No, I'm not alone. Going... I have two other people with me. Gotcha. And, and they know it's fine that there's a couple people. Or it's yeah, because we're all gonna have sex with this oh kid. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. It's, it's hor- yeah, and we're gonna oh. film it, and it's gonna be just like oh my gosh. Yeah, there's one person to film, and then two people are gonna. Oh, have and they sex. Knew, and they knew that. Oh yeah, they and helped they, design it. Yeah, they're like, I, you can do this. There's oh a, my gosh. And, and in the and how much would that cost for someone? Oh, for for a kid oh that gosh. young to have him for the night was around three thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's like three or four times what you would pay for like an adult oh. a sex worker, say. And how often is that that child being used? Oh, every day. Way? Oh my god. Every day, maybe maybe more than once a day, because oh. he he was booked for the next day. Oh. So that's why it was like, if you don't come now, guys, you can't. He's gone. That's why we had to make a choice, right? Oh my god. So now we got to film this. This is where it gets crazy, right? So we have some contingencies. I had a hat. With a camera, oh, watch. Yeah, yeah. And Murphy's Law, I remember as we're driving over, both aren't I functioning. Mean, break. Yeah, 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 it's like, oh, I got a cell phone. So it, it feel, so we go in, we can't take more than three or it's going to be too yeah. suspicious. So us three go in and we get to the, the traffickers meet us. Like, okay, the kid's in that room. Oh my God. And so we go up to see him. And we got soccer balls and we give it to him. And so we're like, okay, come on in. He's like, well, no, um, uh, you, we're doing the deal in the other room. I'm like, crap. Uh, okay, I'm not leaving that kid alone. I'm definitely not with one person. Because once I see the kid, I'm never leaving him alone yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I instruct the two to stay with the kid because I don't want that kid to be alone. And I, don't, and I can't. Because you have, haven't paid yet. Is haven't paid yet. Gotcha. And, and they don't. They want to do the exchange in a different room. Oh, my gosh. So I I, I uh, give um, the instruction to, to the two. Stay. I don't want that kid alone. And I'm not going to have just, you never leave a victim with just one person. You have to, so there's a witness of anything that might happen, mm-hmm. right? So I'm alone now. <laughs> My team was was pissed I was going, and now I'm alone going into the other room to the, through the garage, and all I have is my cell phone. Now, I'll show you, it's hilarious. I'll show you the footage. It's crazy. Wow. So I'm just like holding my phone, you know, putting right, it, you know, right, just right. like wherever I can hold it. And, you know, I got good footage, and um, we did the exchange. You're speaking in Spanish. I speak Spanish, yeah. Wow. So I, I can, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with these guys, and, uh, and, you know, they're freaking out. I remember at one point, one of the guys walked, he's, he's open the window and looking to see if there's cops. And I know they're out there. There's 30 of them out there, the, 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 the Mexican team. Right. And I'm freaking out if they still, if they'll see them. So I'm freaking out. This, so I, I, I say, you know what, this guy's too, what, what are you looking at, your sniper? Is that your sniper over there? You're sitting, no, I'm out of here. If you don't close this window, you know, so, okay, 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 we'll close the window. Wow. You know, to kind of block him from, from seeing. seeing those, the yeah, cops, so yeah. I wasn't there for maybe, you know, he sold me cocaine, which is like, well, you're already screwed. I guess why not throw a couple more years on your sentence? Right. But, so I, I bought the cocaine. You know, the you know the cops authorized sure. uh, that and actually told me to do that. And the cop, there, there's one detective that's really close on the scene, and um, I eventually said, "Hey, I got a buddy coming up, and you might hear his footsteps coming up." You know, and and so um, I got him distracted, got him to say everything, every detail the kid is going to do, how much money. Oh my gosh! We exchange, and you got to have, have that have conversation. It on video. Yeah, you got to have it on conversation. Recorded so they don't come back later. And he didn't ask to like put your phone down or anything, or you're just kind of hiding it. No, wow. I did a really good job hiding it. Wow. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then you get the whole exchange. Whole exchange. I remember when he gave me the cocaine. I was like, oh, okay, and I kind of put the phone up. Like the cocaine's like this big in the camera. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like a little bag, but you know. Um, and then and then. Uh, so you buy the cocaine first, and then you pay the three thousand or whatever. Yeah. For, for the yeah for the, the act that for, night. Yeah. And then I and then I get him say, hey, I want to make sure that when we go in there, we can do every like. Oh my gosh. So There's, they so otherwise you wall them off, right? Because later they'll say we thought it was just a party. They're gonna play soccer. They, right. You know you know you got to make sure it's on camera. Like what am I gonna do? And the grosser the better for oh the case. Oh my gosh. It was horrifying because you're listening to this and saying, well, well, what if? And we know the right questions to ask. Sure. That that kind of induce them to speak their mind and their heart, which what the kid will or will not do. Oh, my gosh. And so we got him every, like, yeah. He's, to say everything. You can do everything to him. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and they're very clear about How that. How do you stay in, I guess, character when you're thinking 30 minutes before this, I'm going to go, I'll do whatever I can for my son, Luke. This is my son that I'm going to rescue, essentially, emotionally yeah. in your heart. But then when you enter this place, how do you not transfer back over emotionally to where you want to, rip this guy's head off and you have to be like a pedophile 
acting like, yes, I can't wait to do this and this and this. Yeah. So it's the weirdest thing. I've been doing this for 18 years and I've gotten better at it. Right. So I've learned over the years how to answer that question. In the beginning, it's really hard, you know. Um, like in the beginning, I, I had actually go to therapists and I would actually train my mind oh my gosh. To, to like not see my to kid. To block it. Yeah. yeah, to block this or block that. And then I eventually got to the point where I started use, letting my kid, I was ready to let my kid's face be superimposed. And, and I actually let it happen, wanted it to happen because I realized I'm better, I'm more effective wow. if it's my kid, right? And it's personal, you know? Oh. So that's so why I started doing that. But the, the weird thing about undercover work, um, and everyone's different how they apply different, you know, mental Techniques, games. Yeah. But the only way I've learned so I don't just go, ah, just, you know, in the middle of the thing. Because you know you have the end result, you need to finish it. Right. right? Yeah, you if you, you, you will fill that kid. You'll blow the, yeah. You'll fill that kid. And the, the other thing I do is, I try to find the good in that person because there is actually good in everybody. Really? It's hard to say this, but you find that like, they'll have a family. A lot of them have kids. And so you kind of focus on like... How can they do that when they have kids? I cannot understand it. Like I've, I was on a case once where the guy was selling me all these kids and then he pulls up a picture of this other little girl and he's like, I'm like, isn't she beautiful? I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's my daughter. I'm like, you're going to sell me your daughter? No, he was just showing me, isn't she beautiful? I'm like, dude, how did you just do that? Like you were just selling me kids her age, and now you're just now you're like proud daddy. Right. Like, but you, you wouldn't know, sell her, but you'd sell these other. You'll kids. sell it's someone else's kid. You'll sell, but you know yours is just daddy. Wow. And so I focus on like whatever humanity is left in them. Wow. I focus on that so that I can find a connection. Otherwise, and I, I try to like that side of them. So you it's try really to, hard. You try to buddy buddy with them. Yeah, but because you kind of make it real, like you, if, especially a long term case. You've got to make a chemical connection because mm. spirits connect, right? Like, yeah. how's your family? How's your wife? How's your kids? Yeah. How's, how's business? I want them to feel a genuine friendship, and it's really hard because you start slipping back to like, I want to, I want to, you know, I destroy this person. Yeah, <laughs> and and but you just go long enough and play that game, and then it, it's just this big relief when you see. Oh my them, gosh! You can't cuff. You're just like. And I usually I usually start crying. Like I try to get away before that. Yeah. Like it may happen. It might happen an hour later. It might happen a week later. But I oh, it always happens. Yeah, there's a release. Yeah, you have to because you're you're holding a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, man. You know, and uh, and especially if it's a case again dealing with children. That's if it's a drug case. It's probably it's, it's very very different. Yeah. But these guys are hurting children. You see the kid. The kid thinks I'm gonna hurt him. Like that feels horrible. And they usually don't ever get to know. That you were actually there, you were the one that helped them, you know? Oh, right, right, right. Because you can't risk, sure, you know, sure. sometimes, very rarely, it happens where the undercover, for some reason, gets to like, hey, Later, yeah. I was actually, I was the, Helping I was the you. guy. But if they're so young, they may not understand the fully in their brains and they've been so. Yeah, we, we, we rescued a kid in 2014, an Operation Triple Take uh, in, in October 2014. And um, he stayed with our organization. He went through aftercare and then he became an ambassador and, he started getting to know our aftercare team really well. And then he learned the story. He's an adult now, right? He's like 19 years old. Um, it had been like eight years. And he said, I want to meet you. me. Oh, my gosh. But he, he, he remembers me. He knows who I am, but he also remembers that was the main guy. The, the bad guy. The bad guy. Oh. And he, he said, I want to meet him. So I went down to Cartagena. Uh, when was this? This was maybe oh, like a couple years ago. Uh-huh. I went down to Cartagena and to meet him. And, you know, he was excited. Dude, right when he he walks into the house, I'm like, what's up, bro? And I said his name, and he just goes, gah! I, like, reacted. I'm like, oh! Like, he, he couldn't, it was like, I just walked away. Like, okay. Wow. He just could he's like, I'm sorry, no, I know you're a good guy! You know? And then he's, he's, a, hair, he's a hairdresser. We uh-huh. helped him go through school and stuff. And so then we just, he, he, he cut my hair. And then we and now we're well, now we're buds, you know. Right, but right. But that trauma, you got to re- learn oh, how to yeah. let go of that trauma. Yeah. And I only went, by the way, because he, he wanted an aftercare. He wanted his aftercare yeah, folks yeah. said he wants it. It's time, and it was time. It's, a, it's, it's just, a healing time too, probably. It's it like, was let me very face healing it, for him. Let me revisit it, which is always hard to do. It's it was, scary. Yeah. It's traumatic to revisit the yeah. trauma. Yeah. There's going to be a period of like this is emotionally overwhelming, but the only way to allow it to yourself to heal is to really start facing it in some way. Yeah. And that's what worked for him. It sounds yeah. like. So what happened at the end of this uh, in Mexico with this this one boy? Um, so you you got the footage, you buy the cocaine, then you pay for the exchange, yeah. And then what? You go back into the no, other room? No. So uh, once the exchange happens, that's for for the prosecution in Mexico in this in this jurisdiction. That's all they needed. So you didn't go back and see the kid? No, 
No. You just do what? You call someone? You so I, yeah, I just text the cop, say, done, deal done. And then I told them, I said, hey, my, my, I have a friend coming who's going to be part of the party. He's going to film some. Okay, no problem. So I keep him distracted enough. And so I, and so, um, I, go, I go up in the garage real quick. He's coming, no problem. And then I keep him super distracted. And then I hear the footsteps coming up. And I'm like, oh, there, 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 there they are. It's the cops, right? And then all of a sudden, it, boom, police. So you're in the room with the guy still, just kind of buddying, buddying with him, hanging out. You know in, in 60 seconds there's people coming up. How does that feel for you when you know there's going to be police coming in? Is it fearful? Is it exciting? Are you just waiting? Does it seem like it's hours when oh, you send always, a text? It always seems like it's like hours. 60 seconds later, they're there. It always seems like hours. But you gotta, you and gotta, what if they have guns? What if the bad guy has and guns? you don't know always. You, you, you do your best. But in this case, I had no... Because you didn't have a weapon, did you? No. Because they'll probably check no. you usually. Yeah, I, in, right? even when I w was in law enforcement, my personal preference, I've seen others choose differently, but I don't. I think it's more dangerous to have a gun. I've, I've seen cases where because they see you have a gun... They, it's more dangerous. Right, yeah. and, and I just would rather They're just, on guard now. They're like getting their weapons out. Yeah, I'd rather just act. I, I'm confident in my ability to act the part and just and disarm them that way. And I've never had issues. I've never had... And you have... Communication skills to keep them connected. That you have emotional skills. You can disarm them psychologically, Correct. emotionally. Yeah. Communicating with them, plant, you know, yeah. humor. All these make them things. laugh. Like yeah, if you, if you keep keeping someone laughing, it's relaxing, and, and that's easy for me. I just yeah. act like a like a drunk <laughs> version of myself always, sure. and just I can make jokes, and I'm like, I'll do crazy things. I'll start tickling guys, like really, yeah, like I'm drunk, like what's up, man? What and they just can't help it because it's funny. I'm also patting them down. Okay, like, right, right. And just and but they, you, if you keep them funny, like if they're, right. if they're laughing and they're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get paid. This is all. Fun. Or are you talking about like, hey, what are you gonna do with the money, bro? Like, because I'm gonna bring other friends. Like, you get them thinking about that, that Ooh. get that dopamine going yeah. for them. Like, Ooh, I'm gonna buy this and this, right? Yeah. Just keep wow. them distracted. Yeah. And you also have a lot of combat skills, like hand to hand. Yeah, like, you I, could disarm if you needed to in a close. I, I have things I can do on that. Front as well, but, <laughs> right. but so you feel but, confident in that. I'm confident enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they don't have a weapon, you could defend yourself yeah. enough, yeah. So they came in, they come after the guy, they what, put him in handcuffs, and then... Yeah, so they come in, and because, again, we had no choice, right? Because we went from a house with seven cameras, right. both my undercover cameras fell. So were you just filming so, with your... No, this is funny, <laughs> because I wanted to film as much as I could of the arrest... At this point, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But, you know, a, a normal person who's getting arrested knows they have to go face down. So I go I go back down. <laughs> and I'm sure the traveler like, just like this. This guy doesn't know how to get arrested. <laughs> so I go back like this. And I put my phone on my chest. I'm like, what? I lay down. And I got the shot. You know? No way. <laughs> yeah. So did the guy so the guy knew that you were in on it then at that point? No. No, because he wasn't, they really weren't looking. I didn't make it obvious. I just was like, whoa, I sat wow. down in the corner. So you thought I kind of they were coming to get you tried. too. Yeah, because that's my safety. So uh, I go out with them in handcuffs. Because otherwise they might say, look out for this guy or whatever. Yeah. Right. So you and, go out in handcuffs. Yes. You get arrested too, part, yeah. of, the, part of the thing. And that's part of the, the strategy to go next level too, yeah. right? Because they don't want, like, who, who dived this out? Who's, who's go, you know, what's going on? Um, they can... You you can you can make it less suspicious, make them because mm. you're trying to get next level. How do they find us? The the lead might have really come from Someone the law else. enforcement up here. They don't yeah. want to, them to make that connection. We might have informants into that organization. So if they say we've been following this gringo for for six months, he's been through Bali and Thailand, and then he came here. Oh, so this guy. You've been chasing him. Ah. That's how you found us. Wow. So then you you keep safe other informants wow. that are that are hitting the organization. That makes sense. That's so they can use that tactic. Very and sophisticated. It, and it keeps me safe because yeah. I can get out of the country and them thinking, where do you go? You know, we they send we, we send him to Mexico City because he's right. American and he's going to get special punishment. Whatever. Wow. And then I and then we disappear. So do you <laughs> actually go to like the police officer or once you're in the car and drive away? They kind of let you go. Yeah, they'll not? drive us usually to like the station. And then close the door, even bring us in sometimes, and then release us. Wow. And we wait a little bit and put different clothes on, take the wigs off, whatever, and then just go out. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Just back door. Go to the airport. Later. We get out right away. Really? Like, yeah, you don't want to hang out because people talk. And so you go to the airport and you leave? Immediately. Yeah. Anyone who's, who's on the, on the, on the uh, what we call the primary team, uh -huh. the undercover team, you gotta get out of, you got to get out of the country because people talk quick. And you don't, even people in the, in the police station, we, we, you know, we always deal with that. The so, corruption. So. so where is it? Where is this boy now? And when was this? Six months ago, you said this or? was within within the last year. Yeah. So where? What happens to someone once you rescue them and you get them out of this situation? What's the next? 
year look like of their life, whether it's one boy or 100 people at one time. Yeah, so the aftercare portion is the most important part yeah. because if you don't have that piece, you didn't even do anything. Yeah. I've seen I've seen people go in and like they'll, they'll do like a rescue, whatever, and then they just leave. And, and, and frankly, that's how when, in the government we started, if I did international ops, I was told just leave. And we, because we just, the host government's in charge of that. We never do that anymore. Because what happens oftentimes, they fall right back into it. Yeah, it's horrible. It's even worse. Oh. It's a net negative. We traumatize, yeah. It, because now you, they get kicked out, they process them, sign some paperwork, okay, be, see ya. And the kid goes out in the parking lot and the traffickers there to beat the snot out of him. Oh, How man. did you get caught? Now the police are the bad guys. Look what happens to you. No, they oh, avoid it at all no. costs. So you could actually do net negative. You could do damage by going out and being stupid like some people do. I know some people. Right. Like, um, so what's the next year look like then for them? So then we don't begin an operation. Like if I'm sitting down in the very beginning with the law enforcement, because we won't work unless we get permission and sure, we're sure. signed up as informants or different, make it very legitimate. Um, we have our aftercare team in that first meeting. And we tell them, if, if you don't agree that any of the kids we help you rescue, they have to go to where this director, our director tells you mm. they're going. A certified place that we trust. That we vetted. Yeah. yeah. And in, it just happened in that in that region, we had a really good partner. And that's why the, the more countries we're in, you know, some people take the model of like few countries mm -hmm. and, and do lots. We, we Our model is as many countries and plant those seeds because we have faith in our ability to empower them. Wow. Um, and then it's really good because you can you can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So like if, if we rescue, we, this happens, we rescue a Venezuelan or a Colombian girl in Dominican Republic, and then, then we get them home, and then we have a team waiting for them already mm -hmm. on aftercare. So yeah. so we always have that place, whether it's in the country or the, or it's a home country. Sure. So and, they go to an aftercare facility, a, right. a, a, some type of home where right. there's adult supervision of right. trusted vetted individuals that then do what? They give them a place to live. They, live, schooling. Um, you know, recreation. Yeah. It's 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 like a, uh, a safe environment. It's it's a, it's a very safe environment, and we look for the parents. We look for family, mm -hmm. and hopefully, we can find. What if the parents are the ones that were the the ones selling? And it? oftentimes, that's the case. Oh. Um, unbelievably, but but oftentimes, the the fam the family is involved, and, and so we just keep them in our home. How do moms sell their children? I don't know, man. It's one of these mysteries I'll never, never, never understand. Have you talked to some of them afterwards and, and tried to ask them, like, what psychologically is off? Is it a fight or flight? It's, because, is it a survival mechanism? It's survival. It's, but once you have the money, uh, once you've sold your children a few times and you've made a couple thousand dollars in a very poor environment, don't you have at least some money for, like, the next month? Like to stop at some point, or like, why do they keep doing it? Is it greed? Is it's greed. It... It's just greed, and then just get used to it. Oftentimes, I've found that the parents who are doing it, like, well, my mom did it to me. Oh, so it's, it's a know, cycle. They cycle. don't know any better. They don't know. Any, that's what they know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh man. Yeah. So what is what's the good side of this? What can what can people see after you know six months or a year? Do you start to see cases of in kids that? Are starting to be, I don't know if you call it rehabilitated or healed, healed, like reintegrated, healing, reintegrated, yeah. reintegrated yeah. from this so, horrible emotional traumatic right. process that could have been years yeah. of their life. So, how we um, kind of guide our partners in aftercare, and we stay with, we stay, with, we don't just drop them off and right. see you. Like our aftercare team keeps growing and growing because mm -hmm. we take care of them, including the ones we didn't rescue. Right? Yeah. There's oftentimes it's just an aftercare mission, um, and. The one thing that we really invest in, every kid's so unique. There's not a one-size-fit-all for healing. Some might need this form, that form. There's so many different modalities, yeah. right? Um, but one thing that is, is, is almost consistent everywhere is to provide opportunity. Um, because eventually you get them to a place where, like, what do you, what do you want to be? See, when you, sometimes when you get these, these kids out, they don't believe they can even have a favorite color. Mm. You ask them, what's your favorite color? What? I didn't know that was a thing for me. It's not an option. Yeah, I'm a commodity. I'm not a person that has thoughts oh, or feelings. Or, mm, yeah, they, they. It's it's the craziest thing you see. It's like wow, like, and, and then it's like, well, you you do, and you can be whatever you want to be, you know. And and that's the most fun part for me when we get to say, here, what do you want? This one, like that kid I was telling you about. He wanted to be a hairdresser. Great, we're gonna cover you. We're gonna get a scholarship. Wow. You're gonna and, and this guy's killing it. Right? Wow. We even flew him up 
last year to the United States to go to like a real high end wow. uh, hairdressing school. You That's know, cool. and I follow him. I follow him on Instagram on on you know not not the my separate account. account. Yeah, yeah. Uh, se- but I just I'm like, dude, you're killing it, bro! Like he's those big weddings and wow. and you know the, the, another child because we're just you know we're eight years old. Yeah. So the kids we rescued in 2014 now becoming adults. are becoming So we're getting yeah. to watch. Like, can it happen? Can you reintegrate? I just recently, one of my aftercare folks sent me a, a picture of this other girl that I was on the operations, a little girl when she was when she, we rescued her. She's got two kids, wow. an amazing husband, and she was briefing the first lady of the country she was in about human trafficking. Oh, my gosh. And she was showing the pictures that we gave her from her own operations. Like, oh, my that's, gosh. That's me right there. Come and let me on. tell you. Yeah, and I was like... Oh my gosh, I was crying a lot. And, you know, she, she had this awesome husband, two little kids. And I was like, look at this. Like, they can come out. They can reintegrate. And it's just... It's, and really help make change. Yes. They can help impact oh, people around them. A lot of them. Way. Well, let me... So one of the kids, one of the kids that grew up, um, and wanted, a lot of them want to come work in anti-trafficking. And for us, a lot of them for us. So this one kid uh, became an adult and, um, and had recently been married. And he, he goes out and finds victims, which we don't tell him to do that because, like, bro, you got to, he's like, no, I go, you know, he just goes out to, like, public squares and he can identify, like, I know you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. He approaches, this is a true story. This is crazy. This is so amazing. He went to this girl who looked, he knew she didn't want to be there very, very young and she was pregnant, like, barely. He could tell because this guy knows the world so well. He knows what's in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so he walks up and he says, are you okay? You know, I was once, you know, being in this situation as well. And she's, and she's like, why are you talking to me? He's like, I just want to help you. And she starts crying. And she's like, God must have sent you because I decided to, right just before you walked out to me, I was going to kill myself. Oh, my god! And the baby would die too with uh. me. And she's like, I don't think I can have this baby. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he said to her, don't, don't, don't do it. Like, I promise you, we'll take care of you. I, am, I recently married and we will adopt your baby. Oh, my gosh. We'll adopt your baby. And, Holy um, cow. And... You know, some like nine, ten months later, uh, we were we were in his country, at and one of our aftercare people were was at the, the baptism of this baby. Oh my gosh! And it's like that's crazy. What? And that's actually, amazing. the story is told in an upcoming documentary called Triple Take, which comes out next year, and um, and it's just like what a what a f- amazing cycle, right? Wow. Like the 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 traffic kid becomes the rescuer. And then takes a baby who was born oh. out of being trapped and raises a this. It's oh the cool. It's like this is so cool. Like it's working. You know, it's, it's working. You know, it's unbelievable, yeah. man. And so what's been? Ha- you were telling me before um, about what's been happening in Ukraine. Yeah. And there's this crazy, you know, story that happens. Can you share some of this about what happened with the, you know, a lot of the young kids and women in Ukraine and how many you've been able to impact and, yeah. and rescue from that situation and what you guys are doing now with with what's happening there. Yeah, so, you know, wh- people often are just perplexed at the number, like $32 billion. You can't even, that, that's how much money, you know, is exchanged, right? In the sex trafficking. In the sex trafficking, just sex trafficking. Industry. If yeah. you, human trafficking everywhere is much higher, but just, right. just the sex 32 trafficking. $32 billion. $32 billion. And people wonder, like, well, that's a big market. How do you get people? How do you get kids? And it's they always it's har- it's harvest time when there's and when it's vulnerable time. So it's it's usually developing countries, wars, natural disasters, exactly. things like that. The traffickers just whoo, it's like a magnet because they're everywhere, right? So when the Russians invade on February twenty fourth, um, it was my wife who we had twelve kids in Ukraine that we were adopting out. Ukraine's a high trafficking country, so we have a program called Children Need Families. That if you're in, if you're an orphan in certain countries, the chances of you being sexually exploited are like almost for sure. Really? So yeah. So it's just like even if you're in an orphanage. Yes, the orphanages are some of the worst centers of abuse. Oh. And uh, orphanages have often in the past been like the centers of trafficking. How do you know what to trust if you're supporting an orphanage? How do you know to trust them? Well, finally, uh, you know, the international community got together and, and they have uh, orphanages signed what's called the Hague Convention. Okay. Which uh, eliminates. Or, or almost completely eliminates the possibility. Wow. So you're certified in the, under the Hagen. You, you, so certain, find those orphanages right. and support the guys. Right, but okay. the, there's so many in countries that don't the apply. And, and so we had 12 kids that we were trying to get out, and Catherine, my wife, kind of founded, she founded this project, and she runs it. 
And so she was devastated about these 12 kids. You know, she knows who they are. She knows where they are. She knows the parents that are going about to adopt them. And she's devastated, right? Having adopted two babies on her own, she understands yeah. the emotional connection. Even before you get them, they're yours, you know? And it breaks your heart every night that you think, are they okay? Oh. You know? And so now there's a war and she's like, she, she comes to me and she's like, you need to go to Ukraine. You know, we have a European office. And I'm like, I, I, I'll send those guys. Yeah. Right and she's like, no, you have to go. You have to go because something's going to happen if you go. And, and it, my wife's very deliberate, very smart. Like, she's not irrational. So when she's saying it, she's feeling it from a higher source. Yes. And, and, and we, 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 don't, we don't mess with that, right? Right, right. So, like, through tears and biting her lip, not wanting to say what she knows she has to, which is sending her husband to a war zone, right? It's like, all right, I, I guess we'll, we'll go. And, but I was still like, Kathy, I don't know how I'm going to get in there. And I was telling you a few hours later, yeah. I get a call from from Mel Gibson. Uh -huh. Okay, and it's like, he's like, I need you to go there and re rescue these kids. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's filming a movie in Budapest at the time, and he calls me. He's like, Hey, there's other kids in Ukraine. They're getting hurt, and I'm like, Oh, so the list gets bigger, you know. And so we end up going out there with aerial recovery, Jeremy Locke, you, you yes. know, and we start these extraction operations. And by that time, the, the Ukrainians give us a list of ten thousand orphans. 10,000? 10, 10,000 orphans, they don't know where they are. So you went to go get 30 or 40, and yeah. then they're like, we need you to get these 10,000 10, kids. 10,000, get them out. Yeah, and Aerial Recovery <laughs> led that effort. We supported it. I was out there, and, and we started extracting these, you know, these kids. The number is now 6,000. 6,000 women and children who we've been able to get out to safety. That you've rescued. You, yeah. you and your efforts and the organizations yeah. you've worked with. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be it and that was going to be enough. 6,000 is a lot of people. Yeah. And that's a pretty cool. So what, what happens? How do you get them out? What is the process of identifying them, knowing that the people that need to get out, and then actually getting them out? Is this helicoptering them out? Is it, you know, what is this? Okay. So, so the... The government gives us a list, and they and they have intel folks that that ride with us. We we basically gotcha. have a, a convoy. Okay, uh -huh. they give us the passcodes to get to blow through the checkpoints because there's oh checkpoints gosh. everywhere, and you know it's, it's scary. I mean, you're, there's bombs dropping. You hear them. You, um, and so we we just, we just go in, and there's usually a, a point of contact, some care worker, uh -huh. you know, who's in that city, and it's usually the cities that just got bombed or in the process of being bombed because that's where the the need is in that moment. These kids are their parents are dying. They don't oh. know where to go, and it's just we get intel lists. There's usually a coordinate, like I said, in the target location that are gathering a couple gotcha. of gathering so points somewhere. You got to go find them and get yeah, them out. and yeah. we'll get the points of, and we'll just go in and we have a, we have a bus, a big bus. You just put them on the bus. Get on the bus and and get out of town. And how do they know to trust you that you guys are good guys and that you're because the, the person on the ground, the caretaker that we have the point of contact, this is safe. knows us, uh -huh. and we have we have identification. Gotcha. They basically designate us all as Ukrainian. Like agents, like we gotcha. actually are, like certified, like designated to be there to, wow. to 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 be able to take the kids out. We're working under their social services uh -huh. department. Got it. So they're they're tracking it all, and then we bring the kids back, and the social services department then has housing for them. Gotcha. Some in Ukraine, some outside of Ukraine, uh -huh. depending on the, the the Ukrainians make those decisions. But wow. so we we are running two, three a week. You know, things get they get bombed, and we just. We just keep keep moving in. So. And you were saying that when you were there, you were also seeing these, I guess, pedophiles coming in, what you call it, harvesting, I guess. They're trying to find yeah. these kids and steal them yeah. for the sex trafficking, yeah. right? Yeah, It's because it's so easy, right? Because like, these kids might be running around like they don't know where to go, their home is gone. Or they're, they're crying like, over the dead bodies of their parents. Oh, and, my gosh. And, they're, and they're, vul they're so vulnerable. And these I, we see these vans. We couldn't we could have called them. There's who, you can't really call anyone, but we'd see it happening. It's like, oh, crap. And we we had talk to you. Who are you? I'm like, I'm a Dutch. I'm a, I'm from Holland. I'm just getting helping. I'm like, well, we're, there's, there's nothing. You can, and then, are you really helping? Or are you doing something right? Like, maybe some are. are maybe some are. Are you aren't, registered? You know. Well, not everyone who's registered. Right. You know. Uh, so they would just say, Oh, come in my van. I've got food. If you want to yeah. come to a safe home, I've got a home for you to. And stay. the kids get on. Oh wow. And then they, you know, at that point, any anyone with a Ukrainian passport could go anywhere because. It's like the refugees, right? Right. Which they take advantage of the traffickers take advantage. It's like, hey, where do you want to go? Let's get an airport. We'll go to somewhere warm. Want to go to, want to go to, you know, the Caribbean or want to wow. go? And and all of a sudden we're seeing this uptick of demand and oh. ads on on the sex boards, you know, for you for for Ukrainians. Ads. Yeah, you know, the, oh yeah, online like, sex boards. Uh huh. Absolutely. So people are advertising what they're looking for. Yeah. And what and what's available? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a huge. Huge, huge market. How do these it's, how do these people on these, I guess, online sex? Is it like chat rooms? Is it just like it's a, every everything you can think anywhere? Of. Yeah, it could be on social media. Every apps. social media, and they'll they'll they, they can hide it in a way right. that's like.
they know what to put. There's certain symbols, signs. Uh, so they're not actually saying what they're... Not all, if, it's, if it's underage, Hey, no. I need a Colombian 16-year-old. They're not saying that. It's like symbols and emojis or something, right? Yeah. But there, there's a whole underworld of how to... That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So when you see that and you see them, you know, putting out these kind of symbols where you know, oh, something's fishy here... And you're able to are you able to track those IP addresses right away, or how does that work? Oh yeah, so we we have a a, a pretty uh, impressive online Intel group. You know, well they do everything right, but the digital forensic they'll help they'll support the forensics when we go uh -huh. help when countries raid a house they get the computers out, but they, they do open source Intel work uh, where they can do all sorts of stuff oh. to track and find and and dive in and it's it's pretty impressive. That's crazy, man. Yeah. And so what is this thing you were telling me about the hidden war? What is happening with this? Yeah, so the hidden war was, while, while we're in Ukraine, they gave us another list of, they think over 200,000 women and children have been trafficked, right, out of the country. Is, is that sex trafficking or sex, that could be organ trafficking? It could be anything. Anything, any type of trafficking. Sex or organs or mostly sex. Wow. So we decide that we're going to do something about this. So we, we put together a team of, Ukrainian speakers. I got to get Ukrainian speakers. So we go to Budapest, do a training, um, and find basically recruit and see who can pass our assessments. They can speak Ukrainian, and we find a couple of awesome operators. Um, one of which is a 35 year old actress who just killed it in all the training and the scenarios. And and uh, thank goodness because we can put put a makeup artist artist on her and turn her into a 13 year old That's crazy. now while this is a miracle from God and, and it goes back to my wife like she didn't even know why she was sending me uh -huh. here we know why now like right. as, because we get a phone call from a Dutch police asset that tells he doesn't even know what we're doing right he says hey bro I got a, a lead for you this pedophile who we've been hunting for two years because he's a political activist trying to change the laws in Holland to to, to make legal sex with children right there's interviews where he's talking about three and four year olds no should be able to consent. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, if they can consent to ice cream or a walk in the park, they can consent to sex too. Oh. It feels good for them too. Oh like, my gosh. It's always it's always to liberate the child. It's always for the child's benefit, you know. Um, but this guy's been on the run because he was arrested in Holland for child for crimes against children. He's like, I just found the guy. He's in Mexico City hiding. And he told me on this undercover, he's undercover like, you know, chat room or whatever. He says he's looking for Ukrainian kids he can insert into the Mexican market, oh sex market. Gosh. And I'm like, bro, you have no idea. I'm sitting here right now with Ukrainians, one of which looks like a kid. So he introduces me to this guy. He says, hey, I got your guy. He's an American. He's in the market. He's got kids. He's in Ukraine right now. And this guy's calling me. He's like, come to Mexico and show me what You're you got. You're talking to the pedophile. Yeah, he calls me on my undercover phone. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, so he invites me to Mexico City to come to come, uh, I, he wants to see my product and he's going to oh show me his gosh. stuff, right? So is that, so would you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll see you next week. Is this, what What happens after that? So you bring kids or what happens? You bring her? Her, I bring her, but I, I first call. There's a couple of countries that you, if you're a pedophile and running away from us, you don't want to go to. Mexico's one of them. Yeah, for sure. Because you're, you're tapped in. Very tapped in, very good friends. And one phone call and they take, okay, come on down this date. So I call the guy, yeah, I'll be down, bro. You know, so we we have, we, we you know, at that point, we're agents of the Mexican government. Mm -hmm. We sign, they sign us up, we're helping them. And so this is what, a couple weeks later down the road now? Is this like pretty? A couple weeks. Wow. Like as soon as we can make it happen, right? And, and and they're getting all this in. So the Dutch are sending us the, what they have, I, we're sending it out to them. Uh -huh. And they're, they're kicking butt before we even get there. Right. I mean, they've got this guy on possession of, 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 of child exploitation material. So they've already got intel and information on him. Possession of, of weapons. Oh my God. All they really needed was, can you lure this guy out? Because we can't find him. Oh. Mexico City is like a country. Like, yeah. So we end up doing that by showing him the girl. Hey, bro. You, you come meet the So we, we, we lure him out and he because he wants to see the girl. And then that, that, that allows the Mexicans to identify him and his house. They run a search warrant on his house that night, and he's famous. He was famous in Holland for hiding his, his material, his, his child exploitation material. He'll hide it on, like, micro SD cards or thumb drives, you know. You can hide it under tables, car yeah. places where... And he always, he bragged to me when we were talking, 
saying the Dutch didn't get the best stuff I had. You, know? you mean like the, the content that he was filming? Yeah, or, um, or getting from other sources, oh like children being raped. Oh my Because they, they love this stuff. Like they just, they get, they just like their collection. Oh my gosh. So another miracle was that, so one of the programs, I'm, I think you may be aware of, we have these dogs, that we, yeah. these canines, and, and they're sniffers, right? And just like a drug dog or a bomb dog, but these, guys, these dogs can sniff out digital media. That's incredible. Yeah, so there's a little glue component in every microchip. And they can smell it. And, they, and we train them to smell That's it. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they're, they're heroes, these dogs. And there's, we, we have about, I think, 80 plus percent of the dogs in, in, in employed in this are from us. Oh it's, we're, kind of, we're kind of the pioneers in this. And we, we get these dogs and we give them to law enforcement. So they take them on the warrants where they're looking for pedophiles. And it's like, find, find the stuff. So these dogs are killing it. They're, they're amazing. They're finding all this data everywhere. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> and sometimes the only evidence that exists that a child might be getting hurt is on some oh. micro SD card under a carpet. That dog's going to find it. That's unbelievable. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful animals. And they, they, they just signal us. Sometimes they, they tap, they sit down on all fours. I showed, you, I showed you a video before we got in here. You, you see the dog that's yeah, running the house. Yeah. So that, was, that was the dog in Mexico. So when, we, when the Mexicans ran his house, as it turned out, another miracle, okay, six months ago before this happened, and this was, on, this was in June, this was on June 5th of this year. We're in Mexico City. And there's press all about this. You can yeah. Google this and people can find, look at the whole story. But um, it just so happened that six months prior to that, one of our uh, officers decided to, that the next, the next dog we're going to train, we're going to keep so that we can deploy rapidly. Mm. There there'd been no dogs international yet that we knew wow. of. And so this dog, Hidu, this, this little two-year-old black lab, right, had just graduated from our program like a week before this operation. Training school, yeah. Done. Yeah. He's, yeah. Right, he's right there. We, he's, in, he's in Thailand kicking butt right now. Wow. But, <laughs> That's but, amazing. But he flies down to Mexico with his handler, who's one of my operators. Oh, my gosh. And they hit the house. He finds four little, four hidden devices. No way. Yeah. He goes out on all four when he finds something. That's incredible. And then, and then they pull it out. They find it. Like, Here it is. So this guy's done. Like, he's done. But so the, you were there with this guy and the girl, the Ukrainian girl, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. you were there. You lure him out of his house, or what happened? Yeah, he, he was going to come to a party. Okay. I set up a party for she him. She said, I got a girl. The girl going to be there. Come see the girl. Come meet her. Yeah. And so he came. Yeah, and, and the Mexicans are everywhere. Like, they're set up. Now, here's the, here's the important part of this story, because this is not even the biggest hit yet. So we want to find his lieutenants. Oh, my God. Like, who are the, because you fled with a, your other political activists. Where are they? So we actually set the scene up to bring up to the hotel room, like a suite, and we didn't. We knew he wouldn't talk to us, so we're just like, I. I Why I wouldn't he talk to you? Oh, because he's scared to death. But he would come to the party, but he wouldn't say hi. Yeah, so he, he would just he like would say a little bit. He's this guy's the most wanted pedophile in the world, and he knows wow. it, right? He's running. He's hiding in Mexico City. So that we got him to come out only because he. I showed him pictures. I did Facetime. I showed the girl right. on Facetime while we're in, look, we're in Mexico. Come tomorrow. So like we got him like, this Excited. has to be real. This has to be real. I mean, I got this long hair. You know, I got, a, this, again, I mean, he, I look so real. I got tattoos all over my body. You know, they're henna tattoos, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so he shows up. But the one question I need to ask him is, where's Martine and Leslie? Because his, his, he knows his I... partners. Because he's public. He's a public figure. So it wouldn't surprise him that, hey, if, if I'm going to go into business with you, you know, you know I've Googled you, bro. You know I've looked into you. But I can only ask that question one time. You can't keep asking. Yeah, yeah. because he's getting suspicious. This guy wouldn't. Yeah. So I wait, and we we set this whole thing up. I got a hotel near a big park in Mexico City because I waited, and we like hung out, had lunch. I said, "Hey, let's go down and see the girl. She's down in the park. She Facetimed us from the park, uh -huh. and there's a monument over there, so he could tell it was the same. He he she was next downstairs. So once we get downstairs, he does exactly what I hope. Because right when we get downstairs. He looks at me and he's like, I now know you're not a cop. Wow. Because he's like, you would have arrested me up there. I'm like, what are you talking about? But I'm like, it's exactly what I wanted. And then he goes an extra step and he says to me. He said you would arrest me up there? Yeah, because I would have. He knows he's smart. If I was a cop, why would I, why would I bring him to the park why would he put where himself, he could run? Right. Why would he put himself in a position where he, if he thinks you're a cop, why would he even show up? He, because he wanted that girl. His, uh, he he wanted, wanted, it was worth the risk. Worth, wow. It was worth the risk. For you to sell her the girl, essentially, so that he could sell her over and over exactly. again. Exactly. And maybe in, 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 and have sex with him oh and rape gosh. her also, right? So he, he takes the risk. But once we're in the park, he also says to me, and I, don't, I also now know you're not an assassin from Holland. And I said, you thought that was even a possibility? He's like, well, yeah, dude, they want me, man. But I know you would have killed me up there. Why, you can't kill me down here. There's too many people around. 
But this is exactly where I wanted him. I set it up this way. Are you footing, filming this too, or yes. audio or something? Yeah, or this, yeah, this is this. This you got cameras. Yeah, what? and also there's cops everywhere in the park. Oh my god! Because they knew that I was going to ask this question, and they just said, "Take as long as you want. If he runs, we'll catch him. He won't right, run." Right, right, right. Um, and and then I asked the question. I said, "So where are those boys, Mark Martin and Lice? Like, I, they seem like cool dudes." He's like, "Oh yeah, you read about them?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "You know, they're actually running a sex hotel." Oh my gosh! He says and, this. And, yes. But this is why he's, because he just got this emotional release. He, now he feels We're like he, in can the be park. he can be honest now. I'm a real, I'm real, right? Yeah. He's like, they're in a sex hotel running. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And I'm just going, oh my gosh. Like, this is a bigger hit than, they're bigger than you, all of a sudden, right? right? So um, I said, you know, can I go with you? He's like, he's like no, I, I don't know you well enough. I said, have you even been there? He's like, yeah, I spent a couple months there. See, he, he's, he, he doesn't realize what I know. That night, we're going into your house, I'll get your passport. I will know what country you were in. Wow. So I said, well, how long were you there? He's like, two months. I was a bartender at the, at the hotel. I'm like, okay, well, we're, we're, the country's locked up because you have a passport. And um, he wouldn't tell me much more than that. And at that point, I knew we had you're enough. Gonna, yeah, you're so not going to ask more too. Right. Yeah. So I peeled off at that point. Like, hey, got to take a phone call, which was the sign. And then and we have the footage, right? We had like, And he's with the girl at this point or no? No, he, we never let him get to her. Oh, wow. Right? And then the cops just start coming out of the trees. Because <laughs> when I go off like this, that was yeah, right. like now all the time. And he just like before he, he doesn't even know what hit him. He just it's over. And what's up? We have it's all filmed. You know, he's the guy with the red hair. You see him yeah. in the, in the cops video. are just surrounding him. Yeah, he's just arresting. Yeah. So then we we our, the dog goes in. You know, finds the four devices. The next day, the attorney general talks about he do the dog. He's the most famous dog in Mexico to this day. Wow. He, he was on the front page of every news outlet. That's like, amazing. Yeah, this little dog that like just saved the day. You know, so he had an OUR jacket on. You know, <laughs> amazing. Man. Yeah, super cool. They're called ESD dogs, electronic, uh, uh, electronic um, storage yeah. device dogs. Storage so device. Yeah, electronic storage device canines. Wow. Um, and so the hidden war then is is how does that connect to the hidden war? Well. Do you want me to, can I tell you when we go to Ecuador? Yeah. Because this is where, I, I, yeah, so I'll get yeah, to the yeah. end Because it, it hits the United States wow. eventually. That's the scary part about okay. this and the important part. Because this is, this is a pedophile network that's kind of all over. Oh, they're all connected. They're all connected. They're all talking. From all over the world. From all over the world. And, and from inside the United States as well. So uh, our intel unit goes in and looks like, okay, we, we, we got the passport two months he was in Ecuador. So the hotel's somewhere in Ecuador. Where? Well, the, our Intel guys are open source OSINT guys. You know, they go, they go and ch -ch 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 -ch, and they find they messed up one time. There was an ad in a little village of, in Canoa, Ecuador. There was a big earthquake in 2016. Very vulnerable population, wow. um, single single parent homes, and that's exactly where a pedophile would go hang out. There was a, one ad for like this boutique hotel in Canoa, um, and it's put on by it's, it just says Leslie. Like one time it says Leslie. Wow. He, he screwed up, put a name, but. That's all it says. 50-50 chance, whatever. We call it Ecuadorian police. Super tight con connections with those guys. Homeland Security, our U.S. Embassy supports it. They rush out to the village and uh, on the beach, and they set up on the, on the hotel. It's in the ad. Within one hour, both those guys rear their heads around, looking, just casually come out, and there's little boys in the house. Oh. And, it's, and, and then this other dude comes out of the house. Okay, we're like, oh, my gosh, that's, that's the fourth guy we, we would have looked for. He was visiting as a tourist. With another dude, crazy, and 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 um, this is so important because it was in a kind of a, a part of a, it was being uh, remodeled. I just got word literally this morning from the prosecutor down in Ecuador. He's like, bro, we just I don't even know what we found out. These guys were launching in a, a huge. They were going to finish that up, and it was going to be like pedophiles everywhere. You want to have your little boys come on down here? Mm. It's it's very obscure. There's not crazy. much. Yeah. Um, so this guy who comes out of the house, okay. Because we're going to the judge, like, judge, you got to get us a warrant. we got to get in. He's like, I don't have enough. Get me more. Get me more. And, and it was that same day this guy leaves. What are the chances? He leaves the first day we get eyes on the place. He gets on a plane. We track him to Miami. He's coming probably to set something up here because they're going to set up a, a bunch of hotels. He comes to Miami. We call Homeland Security. That's who I used to work for. They pick him up, do a, do a full forensic on his computer, and they find all this evidence, right, of child sex. So he gets sent back to Holland. There's, there's a warrant for him waiting in Holland, right? So he's gone. We got him caught. And then that, that gave us the evidence we needed because the, the machines came out of the house into Miami. So the judge is like, done, warrant. Boom, you saw the footage, right? Knock down the doors. And then the guys get arrested. 
And then all these kids and their families start emerging onto the streets. And that was, wow. it was, we had, we had child forensic interviewers ready in case this happened. We've counted somewhere between three and 400 kids were likely sexually abused oh over the two years those guys were there. Oh. And, and all their kids, the kids start coming sobbing, telling their parents. The parents were like, what is going on? The Dutch uncles, they had, they had Xbox, they had games, they had candy, and they bring kids in every day. Oh my gosh, man. Um, I've never this seen anything crazy. like this. We actually built an aftercare home in the village oh. just to take care of hundreds of kids. We feed them, because you gotta take care of those basic needs first, yes. right? That, that it's the vulnerability always that begins mm. the, with the problem. And then they're going through their therapy and all wow, this. Man. We end up going to the president of Ecuador's home. It's this big deal, right? They're like now we're friends with them, and we're we're helping. We're, my wife and I are working directly with the first lady to help on adoptions, and so it's this it's this amazing thing that's happening. Um, uh, but you know what's what's scary, and where Americans need to wake up. Mm -hmm. We call this the hidden war because the overt war is what I just told you. The hidden war is who in the hell are these guys? I mean, they're, they're, they're going online and saying, kill who you are if you ever want to have sex with kids. Oh. Like, this used to be very closet. It's not, it's not. They're coming out now and talking. And what's scary right now is happening is we studied the kind of the, these guys are a political party, so they have, they have like literature. Jeez. They're policy platforms. And the things they want, they want kids to have access to lots of sex material. They want kids to have, uh, you know, they, they, they talk about like separating parents from kids. Like, the, don't let the parents get in the way and how to do that. Wow. Um, all sorts of things. For someone that is hearing this and they didn't know the, the weight of just the sex trafficking world and how big it was and how big it is and where it could be going if we don't do anything to stop it, and it feels daunting to them, what can they do to, to get involved in some way in supporting ending sex trafficking? What, what's the first step? What can they, how can they learn more? Where can they go on your site to get more information about what governments are doing? And yeah, so yeah, it's a, it's a super dark world, which is why so many just want to turn a blind eye. Right, and I've, we're, we're that's why I'm so grateful for you, Lewis, because you're you're a very prominent person in, in the media, public figure that's not afraid. Right. So most are afraid to talk about it because mm -hmm. they I've seen they say, Tim, my my place is a place of light. Like I don't want to bring mm -hmm. I don't want to bring darkness to my people, and, and it's like no 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 no. You're gonna bring light right. to the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. But you, I mean, you've been a supporter and you've donated man. so much course, money, you brought so many people, so thank you for being course, brave man. enough to even talk about this, and, and it's so important. Um, and the good news about you know what we can show people is we actually have a solution. Mm. We're not just gonna wave some dark flag of, of, you know, of horror and terror. Right. We will tell you what it is, but we're gonna tell you we will go anywhere and we know how to go there. We have partners all over. I mean, this case I just told you, in four months we pull all that off and we can do it again. Wow. And it's, it's, we're, we're training law enforcement, empowering law enforcement, moving rapidly and getting kids out. And so if you come visit us at OURrescue.org and learn, uh, we, there's videos, there's content. We have materials that help you um, to identify human trafficking or exploitation wow. that might be happening in your own community, in your own home. So we have trainings. Uh, and then you can participate in, in, in the rescue and rehabilitation by supporting our teams around the world. Wow. So, so OURrescue.org. Yes. And I think there's also another thing about the hidden war. Yeah, the hidden war was this crazy case that's ongoing. It's been through all these countries. So if you want to learn more about that specifically, and if you want to contribute directly to the, the, this important mission of this particular war that's infiltrating the United States and everywhere else, uh, it's OUR Rescue and then, and then slash... Hidden War, yes, and we have a we have a brand new trailer yep. that's coming out explaining this, and we're actually gonna we have we're gonna like launch it when your show launches. Yeah, so it's amazing, man. Yeah, you're a hero, Tim. No, I appreciate no, you, man. Thank I, you. I acknowledge you for how you are so committed to this, and I know you know I've seen you off camera and I've seen you on camera, and I and I know how challenging it is to take on the weight of it. You know the responsibility, the weight to psychologically shift yourself and be in on these rescues and act like you know you're you're in on, as a pedophile and then be with your family there's there's got to be a lot of pressure and weight yeah. because the mission is so big and it's so dark yeah and so i really acknowledge you for your incredible big heart on how you just keep showing up for so many kids because there's so many kids that don't have hope and for you to be able to be out there and your team's out there it really inspires me that 
there could be a stop to this one day. Yeah. That there can't. That there is a solution, and you guys are doing everything in your power. I almost feel like you're doing too much, and you need to take a break sometimes and take a rest <laughs> and take care of yourself. Because I can see sometimes how it can feel so overwhelming for you. But I just acknowledge you for the uh, the call to service that you continue to show up and 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 use yourself, your skills, your talents, your voice to be of service to help so many kids that don't have the ability to help themselves. These are our most vulnerable people in the world, and uh, I really acknowledge you, man. You're a real hero, so I appreciate well, you're it. You're so kind, and, and, yeah. and thank you. You know, I, I always tell, this, this is the truth about fighting slavery of, of any kind. It's, you know, we can get thousands out, right? But, you know, when Abraham Lincoln uh, met Harriet Beecher Stowe for the first time, who was a great abolitionist along with Harriet Tubman and, and Frederick Douglass, and they got really loud, right? Mm -hmm. And he said to her, he didn't take the credit for the end of slavery, and he doesn't deserve all the credit, frankly. He doesn't deserve most of the credit, uh -huh. and I love him. But he even said to her, you're the lady that wrote the book that started this war. Wow. It needs, it, it, there has to be that loud voice. And I always say the storytellers like you, you're the actual heroes. We can only rescue a, a certain amount. It's the storytellers that move the entire community, that yeah. move the needle, that, that bring the masses and stand up. And that's the light that this, the darkness of human trafficking cannot withstand so right. so i thank you for being a light and being a constant course, friend course, to this course. cause man thank yeah, you man. i'm excited man i, I want to continue to support you we've supported you we want to keep supporting you ever since i heard your talk at tony robbins event i think it was two years ago almost three years ago now because i think it was january february 2020 that's right that's correct yeah so almost three years ago is when i first heard about you and heard your speech and i was just like it, it spoke to me you know it was it wasn't something that happened to me, but through sexual abuse, it's kind of related to me in a sense that I know what it feels like to be a vulnerable and be taken advantage of sexually yeah. as, a, as a little boy. Mm. And I can only imagine the pain and trauma and suffering of being sold by uh, a stranger or being sold by your own parents. Not once, but over and over and over again. And so the pain that I felt was just, you know, I could only think times a thousand what these children are going through the suffering. And so the fact that this is your mission and your wife is fully on board where you're probably gone half the year, you know, out serving and in dangerous scenarios is just, uh, I really honor and acknowledge both of you. And I got to meet her at the last uh, UR event. So. Can I say some, something about sure. her? Yeah. Real quick. Um, I wouldn't have done this without her. Mm -hmm. I was a total wimp. And, and when when I had to either do the case or I had to quit my job to do the to do these operations, right? And that's what started OUR. It's like I got shut down because of jurisdiction, but I was this close. And it was like, and it was her that said to me, um, when I said I'll do it, I'll do it. And then the money started coming in. I was like, wait, I'm not going to uh, actually do it. Right. <laughs> and I remember she grabbed me and she's like, I will not let you jeopardize my salvation by not doing this. Unbelievable. And so when you say like, you know, she sends me out, I'm gone half the year. It's true, probably more than half the year. But it's she's the one who says if you don't do this. I don't know what blessings I won't get oh to help gosh. my to help raise my kids. So that's her mentality. Like she's like, you got to keep going. And and it was her, if you remember, when I started that. She's the one who said you got to go to Ukraine, yeah. and she didn't even know why. But after the four months and the crazy, all these countries and four hundred kids in Ecuador and kids in Mexico and in in the U.S. being affected, I remember I was back decompressing, sitting on the couch, and she's doing all the stuff with the kids, and I just started sobbing. Because I looked over at her and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's why you sent me to Ukraine. Wow. God sees these kids in Kanoa that no one's looking for. And all he, he knows, he has to just touch this daughter of his. Oh. And, that, and that she, even if she can't understand why, but she knows she has to send her husband, which is, I mean, that's a way more difficult sacrifice than going in the action is easy compared to like, can you imagine? I'm responsible if my if the father of my children is oh, killed with, by a Russian missile? Oh. Like, I don't know how you did, I couldn't do it. And, and but in the end, I got to go back to, even this morning, I woke up this morning in Utah before I came down here, right? And I said to her this morning, because I just got that news from the prosecutor, I said, Catherine, look, he just, they discovered that these guys were about to launch a whole oh my sex tourist hotel, like, Felt and the prosecutor said thousands of children will not be raped because you guys oh. took that place down. I said, Catherine, look, all because you because God talked and you did it. You sent me to Ukraine. Who knew it ended in Ecuador? But oh that's what you were because she said I didn't know why I was sending you. It didn't make any sense. Those twelve kids, I knew you weren't going to get them, but you had. She said I knew something would happen, and so she really is. She is the mm. the, the unsung hero in this because none of it would have happened, and now thousands. 
You know, thousands of kids have been mm. rescued. Or, you know, when you look at the amount of arrests, the studies that show up to 100 kids will be hurt by one of these guys. So mm. preventative, kids that were rescued that never knew they were rescued. Oh, my gosh. And, I, and I'm telling Catherine, this is that just because of you, because... Because you were willing to do the the, 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 the thing that was impossible. The courageous. Yeah. yeah. The, like forced me to leave my secure job. We didn't have money. Right. I had no savings. And like, are you kidding me? Like I'm the provider here. And, and she's like, I don't care. She's like, I don't care if we end up in a tent, you know, on a beach somewhere. Like you have to do this, wow. you know. And and then the same courage to send us to Ukraine. And, and I just, I just, uh, she doesn't care about being recognized, she, in fact, she, it makes her uncomfortable, but she, I, I just have to say that she, wow. she is the one that makes this happen. It's beautiful, man. Well, I want people to go to OURrescue.org. Uh, make sure you guys go there. We'll have it all linked up and all the, we'll put some of these videos that you'll send me in the video and link them up to your website everywhere. Uh, if you guys wanna learn more, that's the best place. You're all over social media, updating people about what's happening as well so they can follow you on social media. You do have this book as well that shares yeah. more about it, Slave Stealers. This tells the whole story of how we started. Yep. Yeah, True accounts of slave rescues then and now. So if you guys want to learn more about how it got started, this is an amazing place to get started uh, on this book. So check it out. We'll link this up as well. Tim, I'm grateful for you, man. I want to ask you one final question. Um, and I think I asked you this before, but I'm curious your, your response now about a year and a half later. Uh, it's called The Three Truths questions, hypothetical scenario. So imagine you live as long as you want to live. You live 100, 200, as old as you want to be on this earth. Uh, and you accomplish everything you want to accomplish in your life. You live the life you want to from here moving forward. You see it all happen. But for whatever reason, you've got to take all of your written work, this interview, any videos that you have, any content that you've created out there in the world, it's got to go with you to the next place. So we don't have your information anymore of your written word, your audio, your voice, or any videos of you. But you get to leave behind three things you know to be true, three lessons that you would share with the world. And this is all we would have to remember your wisdom are these three things. What would be those three truths for you? For me, I, I think number one would have to be uh, that faith is, it, faith is clarity. Mm. Um, and I don't, everyone has their own idea of what that means, a higher power, right? Yeah. Um, faith in that is clarity. The, the world is so crazy and chaotic and confusing and it's like, how do you even know it's true? I, I can't trust any source anymore. And I have to learn this because I'm trying to find children. It's, I, I, I have this desire and it's like, I gotta cut through the crap and find the truth. That truth leads me to a kid. Then I've learned that if I don't turn to that higher source, I'm, I'm totally lost. Yeah. And I won't be able to make it because I'll be crushed spiritually, emotionally, so to me, I say faith, faith. is clarity. Faith mm -hmm. is the answer. Mm -hmm. Like trust that. I don't care if someone calls it their gut. Everyone can call it whatever they want. But that intuition has been right mm -hmm. almost all the time. Yeah. Or marry someone that has it. That, or <laughs> or have lean a good, on that. Or have a good friend that has that 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 piece. Um, two, um, I think we underestimate the power of service. I think mm -hmm. service turns the lights on. Ooh. Again, we all have darkness. Everyone's dealing with it. Um, in some form, but there's a special thing that happens when you serve somebody. It's just, it makes you feel, I mean, just think about it. When, when you're on the street and someone says, hey, where's, where's you know, uh, Jones Avenue? And you just take two minutes and tell them, you, you feel, feel good. good. Yeah, yeah. And you're almost like, why did I, that felt good. <laughs> I hope they, I hope they get there. Yeah. In fact, should I go fall, like you want, that's, that's what it is. It's, that's a light that turns on. And it's actually, um, actually, Tony Robbins taught me this, but uh -huh. when you serve and pray and meditate, any of those things, your brain literally releases a, a beautiful chemical cocktail that actually like makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And then the studies go on to say that people who have that chemical reaction uh, tend to be people that display things like extra courage mm -hmm. and extra creativity and extra love. And, and it's, it's interesting because it's not that the chemicals do that because they've tried to counterfeit those drugs and... It doesn't do that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but what happens, if it prepares your heart. It prepares mm -hmm. your, your body and your soul to open up. And then the higher power stuff. Because how else can you get love, really, and right. creativity? That's, that's an outer worldly kind of yes. thing that comes to you. Creativity, courage, love. And, but you can get it through serving. It's yes. like God has set something up in your body that connects to 
to, to the higher source, right? And so service is the key to me. If, I, if I'm feeling down, if I'm, I remember I, I went through something horrible um, in 2020, like just horrible, just it, uh, this uh, in, injustice completely that was happening to me and my family. And what I don't know, what do I do? What do I do? I'm going to go into Mexico and just go undercover and find kids. And uh, it was the only way I was going to survive right. this. Right. And today we have one of our best offices in that region. And wow. we've done many, many, including, including the little boy I just told you about earlier. Right. He's in that region where I went. I took a team and now we have an office. And it was the only thing that even got me out of the, just from drowning. Right. But it, it did. Serving people is magical. Wow. And it heal, it's healing. It you is. know, it's, it does so much. And if we, all, if we were all doing it, we would eliminate all the problems. Yes. Like we wouldn't be going to war and we would just be loving each other, you know. That's it. Yeah, the service. Um, so service. And the third thing? The third thing, um, the third thing I would say is the power of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had to deal with that on, on many fronts. Like, I see people that hurt kids all the time. Gosh. And, uh, and if you let yourself, if you let yourself. It's a poison. It's a poison. It, it will kill you. And, and just forgiving someone else and it's hard sometimes, right? I've had, you know, we, it's, it's the craziest thing. You know, human trafficking became politicized somehow a couple of years ago. And, and so it just became this weird, like, time and, and just you were open season. If you were, like, we, I, I came in a crazy attack as part of that thing in 2020. It was like, just lies. Like, because, we, just because I guess anyone who gets, at, and you're, you're just exposed to it. Yes. And it's like, it's hard enough that I'm almost widowing my wife and orphaning my kids, and then I get to come home to lies and, yeah. and, and you know, former employees who are just lying, you know, and, and because they got fired for, for cause, and, and it's just a lot of crap. Yes. And, and um, if you don't forgive, you're going to be just, you know, along with the service, just forgive people. Like, yeah. love them. Well, you can man. love anyone if you, you know, just, just try to love them, you know, pray to love, pray for the feeling, but forgiveness is, is liberating. Yes. And, and I, you're just not going to work. You're not yeah. going to be able to serve or do anything. So I guess those are the three most important things. Oh, Tim, you're amazing, man. I appreciate it. Thanks Thank again you, for coming man. on and sharing, brother. Appreciate it, man. What your brain wants from you in relationship to a traumatic memory is indication that you're no longer vulnerable to the same problem. That's what memory is for, right? You remember something bad and you process it so that you change your interpretation or your behavior or the situation or whatever you can change so that it isn't going to happen in the future. And that'll, if you do that thoroughly, you'll generally let yourself rest.